Hi everyone, welcome to this talk uh, for the Fall CAV Workshop 2020. Uh, I'm Olivier Robin. I work as a research professional at GHOST, which stands for Groupe d'Acoustique de l'Université de Sherbrooke, um, which is an international liaison uh, for the CAV. So I'll, I'll first give you a, an overview of, of the lab, and uh, I'll then focus on uh, the deflectometry, which is a full field slope measurement technique. So um, where is located GOES? Uh, it's in the province of Quebec, uh, northeast uh, of uh, North America. More precisely, uh, for Montreal, it's, it's uh, 150 kilometers east of Montreal in the city of Sherbrooke. So um, the GOES was founded in 1984 by Professor Jean-Nicolas. Uh, the GOES has currently six professors uh, and it, it includes, depending on the, the sessions, uh, 40 to 50 people, including students, postdocs, research associates, and technicians. Uh, the GOES is currently the largest Canadian acoustics and vibration research center, and uh, it holds several research chairs. So there has been uh, industrial acoustics uh, by Professor Jean Nicolas, aviation acoustics by Professor Atala and Professor Berry. And currently, Professor Berry holds a CRC Transportation Vibroacoustic Chair. Uh, GOS has been the center of excellence of University of Sherbrooke since uh, two, uh, two, two, uh, 2001. Sorry. And uh, at least up to 2021. Um, the global research areas of the labs are, are currently materials, vibroacoustics, tests, characterization and uh, active control and uh, structural health monitoring with a recent development on uh, ultrasound. The GOES has the chance of having large infrastructures and equipment. Um, these include a 96 channel uh, WFS, which stands for wave field synthesis, a wind tunnel in a inchoic room, a 50 channel ambisonics system, a 3D laser vibrometer, and also a couple reverberant anechoic rooms up to uh, 250 microphone high speed cameras. Um, concerning collaboration, uh, GOS is involved into a lot of collaboration. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't cite there the, the fact that uh, GOS has been leasing uh, with the CV for several years now. Uh, but recently, an international research project, uh, which is entitled the Centre Acoustique Jacques Cartier, was born. And so it's meant for uh, promoting the interaction between France and Quebec in acoustics and vibration. Um, so it, it's a little bit like a France-Canada network, which involves uh, Le Mans, uh, Lyon, and Sherbrooke. So it's, it's, it's a new activity in terms of international research uh, for the GOES. In terms of collaborations, uh, we also have a lot of work that is uh, currently ongoing with the Kermit, which is the Center for Interdisciplinary Research in Music, Media, and Technology, uh, which is based in Montreal, Canada. Um, so some examples of the, the, the projects are sound field reproductions, uh, especially 3D audio. So you get here the picture of an, the Hanikoric room validation of a hybrid method, which combines a sphere of... Uh, 50 sources with, with a circular array of 32 sources. Uh, another example are the fact that we are currently developing an interdisciplinary research in the broad area of music and sound, including sound perception. So we're currently setting up some special audio recordings of skilled musicians in various conditions. Uh, it also involved the 3D printing of sound directivity of instruments, which should help people to understand how sound is, is radiated from, uh, from, from music instruments. Um, and in this scope, we also have a lot of dissemination. Uh, we really want to um, make people aware of what is sound, and it, it's, it's not so easy to... Uh, uh, make people understand sound because it, it, it can hardly be seen. So 
we're currently setting up some uh, videos, including specialized audio, which will include a binaural recording. So that, that, that's a project we're currently working on. And um, we're also trying to use uh, a lot of comics uh, to explain what is noise, what we are doing at the lab. So th th this is from uh, Caton, um, a well-known uh, curtainist from Quebec. Um, so th these, these are a few examples of what we're doing in terms of dissemination. And um, it also includes a quite new uh, area with the, the inclusion of um, research results and data collection in a museum exhibition. So we had, we had the chance to set up sound, just sound, which has been developed with Sherbrooke Science and Nature Museum, uh, which was touring in Canada since uh, 2019, but was unfortunately paused by COVID. Um, we had the pleasure of having uh, been awarded the 2020 award for the best exhibit small institution for the Canadian Association of Science Centers. And, and, and a point of originality was that we, we also tested um, the possibility of crowdsourcing listening tests using an audio polling station. So the, it, it's, 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 um, an interesting mix of dissemination, including research that can be done with the general public. Uh, this was also extended to uh, to another museum recently. So um, we we include some research results and data collection uh, at Musée de l'Ingéniosité at Valcourt, Quebec. Uh, so th this exhibition started this year and is expected to run until March 8, 2022. Um, and we, we try to answer some questions that the general public might have uh, that are underlined, like should sounds be louder or softer, how insulation absorbs sound. So uh, th th this is a strong orientation of the ghost making research and making people aware of what we are doing. Um, so now I'd like to move to um, a short introduction to deflectometry and the current developments that we are currently signing up at GOES. So deflectometry is a full field slope measurement. And, and before getting to details, I'd like to recall that vibration measurements on structures have been up to date, traditionally limited to the location of relatively few contact sensors. So the typical case would be model analysis uh, when uh, an impact hammer and accelerometer will be used uh, on a structure uh, and the structure will be impacted at several points or instrumented at several points to get its vibration response. Um, the problem is that uh, dense and special vibration measurements, ideally contactless, are, are highly desirable for a lot of topics, including model analysis, vibration mapping, and some radiation study. Low identification, structural health monitoring, uh, the extraction or the calculation of vibroacoustic indicators, or structural op optimization or design. Um, so the, the mostly used tool is certainly the classical interferometer, which is better known as laser Doppler vibrometer. And various configuration now exist uh, that include 2D vibrometer, 3D vibrometer, and even 3D vibrometer coupled with the robot. Um, and, and this is clearly the, the, the most standardized tool uh, for making uh, special vibration measurements. Um, but um, the advance of, in computer and digital imaging technology have led to the development of several techniques to measure either shape or deformation of a vibrating structure. So there are maybe the most well-known is a digital image correlation. And I would like now to introduce uh, what is deflectometry, um, its principle, a uh, few results that we obtain with visible deflectometry and its recent extension to infrared deflectometry. So what is deflectometry? It's pretty simple to understand. So if we're looking at a reflective surface, 
uh, by reflective I mean specularly reflective surface so if we put a grid in front of this surface the, the point P will be reflected here and then record it with the camera and we would have like a, a 2D grid would look like this on the image recorded by the camera or got the loading and if we apply a load on this surface uh, the small slopes the local slope that will be generated will shift at the position and then will obtain a deformed image with loading and what is really interesting with this technique is that um, the difference the path between the point p and point q can be easily related uh, with the phase variations between these two images and the, the grid pitch what we call pitch p is the distance between uh, consecutive points and the interest in, is that simple re geometrical relations between slope fields on the image structure and uh, the simple parameters that are the, the pitch of the grid the separation between points and the separation between the reflective surface and the grid can provide direct relationships to obtain the local slope if the phase the phase map have been extracted from consecutive images uh, so what is interesting is that it's really simple there is the more detailed explanation of what is the pitch right there um, you can also have a, a something that is really important to understand is that the tuning is pretty simple because you only have to vary P and L and what is interesting is that uh, the larger L uh, the better the resolution in terms of slope which is uh, pretty much quite contraintuitive uh, we would think that it's better to be close uh, to have a closer smaller separation sorry between the grid and the, and the, and the image surface which is not the case in practice um, so here is a um, um, simpler explanation which is taken from the book scientific experiments of ontario science center and it was proposed for children that uh, using a can a small mirror an inflatable balloon and a flashlight um, you could see what's happening when sounds goes from your mouth and in fact uh, when you speak in front of the can so the partly reflective membrane here being mounted at the other end the reflected light beam here from this flashlight uh, will be deflected on the wall following the variation of the voice. So this is a simplified explanation of what is deflectometry, but uh, it, it's exactly how it works. Um, so again, th th this is exactly what we are setting up in, in laboratory. There's a lighting, an excitation here, a vibrating and reflective membrane it can be a structure a panel and then you get a deflected light beam so this this is exactly what we are looking at and what we are recording uh, using the camera so in laboratory it, it 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 looks like that which is a little bit different so you got here the 2d printed grid you got a high-speed camera that is looking to a specularly reflective structure here it's a panel that has been uh, polished using your car body polishing techniques and you get the lighting here uh, to finish so the printed grid is then reflected on the panel and the recorded image uh, which is uh, sampled looks like this um, the grid can be generated using any vector drawing program printed on standard poster printer and finally glued here on a particle board so just just a quick comparison of what can be obtained uh, using deflectometry so it, it's a comparison of um, measured vibration maps using either a laser vibrometer on the left and deflectometry on the right so uh, it, the, the, the excitation is applied using a shaker here are this black dot at a single frequency of 525 hertz and what is really interesting is that um, the comparison of the number of points the spatial resolution and the acquisition time um, really underlines 
what is brought by the flectometry. Uh, in fact, we got a factor of um, 13 in terms of number of measurement points. The spatial resolution compared with a classical laser vibrometer measurements is divided by five, and the acquisition times is in the fraction of a second, uh, which which bring uh, an impact and lever, an important lever, sorry, on the, on the possibility of realizing high density spatial measurements in a fraction of a second. Um, so w we got a lot of, uh, of, of results in terms of uh, force identification. So th these have been obtained using the, the, the virtual field method that was coupled with, um, with uh, th these measurements conducted with the deflectometry. So we have been able to really reconstruct the force um, that is injected by this impact hammer as a function of time. So you see that the, the measured force is pretty well reconstructed. And it gives us, so on the left, uh, you got the vibration map as a function of time uh, of this panel sub submitted to uh, uh, an impact excitation. So you, you, have, you really have to have a look right there. So the excitation here was right there. And then you got uh, the vibration response to this impact. So this is a first example. Um, another example was using uh, steel marbles that uh, were non-instrumented. So we'll, we'll let the, this, uh, these three marbles impact um, the panel. And it, it, it's pretty much difficult to, to see or to understand which, which one impacted uh, the panel first. So use, coupling the, the virtual field method with the deflectometry technique uh, allowed us to reconstruct the low time history at the two impact points, but also to produce four dimensional graphic uh, that combines the time history. So the color bar here is, uh, is based on time. So, so black here, look, it, it showed the first impact, then the second impact here in blue and in pale blue, you get the third impact. But we are able also to localize the impact in terms of X and Y position on the plate, but also to quantify the injected force, which is quite interesting and powerful uh, visualization of what happened to this panel. So in summary, um, the deflectometry provides contact contactless, high density and time resolved vibration measurements. Uh, the problem is that it, it's currently limited to plane surfaces, but might be extended to curved surfaces. Uh, the amount of generated data can become quickly large, but we, we have now some pretty powerful computers to deal with it. But, but, but the main problem remains that it's currently limited to specularly reflective surface. And it, it's, it, it's still a, a problem to, to allow the deflectometry to be widely used. So, apart surface polishing, uh, using reflective mylar or glued um, reflective materials proved also to be a convenient way of conducting measurements on place structures. Uh, last year at CAV, we, we made a small workshop to introduce the deflectometry at CAV. Uh, and the, the, the problem of, of the, 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 how to deal uh, with add-on reflective material was recently studied by Gary Rhodes uh, from the CAV, which, which is a, a CAV graduate uh, student, and he defended his master's thesis this year, uh, and it was entitled Measuring Plant Vibration Using Deflectometry, the Advantages and Limitations of Add-on Reflective Materials. And he, he, Gary shown that it, it was possible to, to perform uh, pr pretty interesting measurements, even on a guitar, uh, using reflective material. Another solution is to move to infrared deflectometry. Why infrared? Because um, there's a relationship uh, which is expressed by the Rayleigh criterion below uh, between lambda, the wavelengths of the light, and sigma here, the roughness of the image surface. And th this Rayleigh criterion uh, defines when a surface can be considered as specularly reflective. What is interesting is that 
In the visible spectrum, the wavelength lambda is approximately uh, 500 nanometers. Um, so a roughness of 60 nanometers is required for specular reflection, which is indeed close to a mirror-like surface. Uh, in the long infrared spectrum, uh, the wavelengths, uh, the, I would say the mean wavelength is now 10 micrometers. And the roughness, the, 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 indeed the, the, the required roughness for having a mirror-like surface is now relaxed to a 1.25 micrometer. So th this was tested by Tony and Pierron on different kinds of uh, materials, ABS, brass, stainless steel, aluminium, and even steel. And th they shown that it was possible to perform static measurements, a three-point bending test on such uh, structures. So uh, what we did at GOES uh, last summer is to set up a comparison of visible and IHAR deflectometry. Uh, so th th this is a paper that is currently under review. And just to recall what's happening, remember that the idea is to relate here the surface roughness to the wavelengths of the incident line. So how, how do, did we do that? Um, we used a simple cantilever beam under impact. So there was one side with the mirror like finished and the other side uh, of the beam was left unprepared. So you see that it's a common, common surface uh, for any aluminum uh, plate. And then we used the visible high-speed camera, which is a Fortran a Mini AX200, a printed grid and a measurement on a mirror like of the beam. So this is typically here and see what we got as a picture uh, from the camera's point of view. Um, for the infrared, we used an infrared high-speed camera, the Telops M3K, a thermal grid, and a measurement on the unprepared side of the beam. So uh, what is here a thermal grid? Um, and how did we do that? Uh, it's a PLA printed pattern that is glued on an aluminum plate. So uh, since we're dealing with infrared, the difference of emissivity between the printed plastic and the aluminum when the, the, the global grid is heated, it then produces a construct, contrasted pattern, sorry. And th this contrasted pattern is what is recorded by the infrared high-speed camera. But you see that it, it's pretty clear that we obtain quite similar uh, uh, images at the part that, uh, apart the fact, sorry, that uh, we have different spatial resolution, but I I'll clarify it later. So, a uh, few raw results. So this is the mean squared vibration velocity that we obtain either for here, the visible deflectometry and here for the infrared deflectometry. So the five modes uh, of the cantilever beam are indicated with orange arrows. Um, it's pretty clear that the, the measurement for the visible deflectometry is really neat uh, with a really limited noise. Uh, for the infrared deflectometry, we really see all those peaks induced by vibration modes, but it's, it, it's obvious that the measurement is a little bit sorry, more noisy. And in fact, the problem is that uh, the cooling system of the camera could not be uh, disabled during uh, these measurements. And all uh, these small peaks are generated by the stealing engine that is used to cool the high hour camera. But this is something that's going to be solved in the future. So we expect to get uh, quite similar results than the one below. Another possibility of looking at these results is to look to a displacement maps. So here on the left, you get the theoretical displacement maps for the five first vibration modes of this cantilever beam. So this is here, you got the clamped side of the beam and here it's the free hand of the beam. And this is what we obtain using visible deflectometry, sorry, for the mod number one, mod number two, mod number three, mod number four, and mod number five. And uh, these are the results below that we obtain with infrared deflectometry. So you see that it's pretty obvious that the, 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 the vibration maps for each mode is 
credit will recover it, but with different uh, spatial resolutions um, that, that I'm now going to clarify. So, um, in summary, the visible deflectometry in this the case of this small beam, uh, the results that, that are here reported have a density which in 200,000 measurement points per square meter. And these are obtained at a rate of uh, th th um, 30,000 frames per second. Uh, but the problem is that a mirror-like surface is needed as well as a printed grid. Concerning infrared deflectometry, the results uh, reported here have a density of 20, 25,000 measurement points per square meter that are obtained at a rate of 3,000 frames per second. Uh, the, the point that is to be underlined here is that this measurement can be performed on common material with common surface condition. Uh, and now a thermal grid is needed. And a thermal grid is composed of an heated grid with materials that have contrasted in the CNT values. So um, to conclude this presentation, um, I would like just to, to recall that um, this difference in terms of spatial and time resolution comes from the cameras. Indeed, the cameras that were used for visible and infrared deflectometry have different technical features that directly influence the reachable time and space scales. So they have different sensor dimensions in terms of number and unit size of pixel, and especially in the case of infrared camera, the unit size of pixel is, is larger than the one of uh, the visible uh, camera. And high-speed infrared imaging is still an, an emerging technology with a limited frame rate. But a key advantage is that established methods and algorithms for images post-processing are strictly identical between visible and infrared deflectometry. So uh, to conclude, this practically broadens the range of materials and surfaces that can be tested using the deflectometry technique. So we'd be more than happy to discuss it uh, with people during the workshop. And uh, we're looking to present uh, new uh, stunning results using this technique. I thank you so much for listening to me.